My name is Sarah Thurmond, and I'm playing Amy in SBMT's production of Stephen Sondheim's Company. Uh, Amy is the, uh, most people probably know her as the neurotic bride who sings the frantic patter song, Getting Married Today. So she is one of Bobby's couple friends, but unlike a lot of the couples we see in the show, Amy and her boyfriend, Paul, uh, we actually see them right before their wedding, a whole scene of um, their kind of relationship issues and Amy's commitment phobia. And Amy is one of the other characters in the show, along with Bobby, who does express these anxieties about getting married. So much so that at the end of act one, Bobby is actually trying to connect with her about this, like, why should we get married? Why shouldn't we all just be happy on our own? People need to get off of our backs. Um, and interestingly enough, that conversation sort of ends up being what makes Amy realize how much she loves Paul. I am an enormous fan of Stephen Sondheim. I actually mostly perform in straight plays and specifically classical language plays. Um, doing musicals is something I haven't done for a while, but I always audition for Sondheim because I love his lyrics and his harmonies and his strange rhythmic devices and interval jumps. And I love patter songs. Um, so the fact that I get to sing one of the most iconic patter songs in musical theater means so much to me. And I am so excited. Um, he's also just expressing true, deep human feelings and then making fun of those feelings again, three measures later. And I think that balance of profundity, but having a good sense of humor about what it means to be human is what makes his shows appeal to so many different people for so many different reasons. Pardon me, is everybody there? Because if everybody's there, I wanna thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate your going even more. I mean, you must have lots of better things to do and not a word of it to Paul. Remember Paul, you know the man I'm gonna marry, but I'm not because I wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. But I thank you all for the gifts and the flowers. Thank you all. Now it's back to the showers. Don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. Listen, everybody, look, I don't know what you're waiting for a wedding. What's a wedding? It's a prehistoric ritual where everybody promises fidelity forever, which is maybe the most horrifying word I ever heard of, and which is followed by a new boomer suddenly. Thanks a bunch. Not getting married. That's what happens if you miss one word, the whole thing. Look, I didn't want to have to tell you, but I may be coming down with hepatitis and I think I'm going to faint. So if you want to see me faint, I'll do it happily. But wouldn't it be funnier to go and watch a funeral? So thank you for the 27 dinner plates and 37 butter knives and 47 paperweights and 57 can holders. Yeah, and then I have to breathe and finish the song. That's that's the fun part. <laughs> Honestly, I think the real thing with this song that always trips me up is the second, third and fourth verses all start with a word that starts with an L but the phrases are different lengths. So if you accidentally start singing the words of verse three, you cannot get back correctly onto verse two. So um, you kind of just have to get it right instantly and keep going no matter what. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can demo this with music, but let me see if I can give you an example. Uh, so, you know, the first one is the part of me is everybody here, pretty famous. Um, the second one is, Listen, everybody, look, I don't know what you're waiting for. A wedding, what's a wedding? It's a prehistoric ritual. Um, and the third verse is slightly different because it's another listen. It's, listen, everybody, I'm afraid you didn't hear. Do you want to see a crazy lady fall apart in front of you? So I mix those two up a lot. Um, and then the last one, um, I keep trying to make it the same length as verses two and three. Uh, it's not. It's just, look, I didn't want to have to tell you, but I may be coming down with hepatitis. So if I say listen when I'm trying to do verse four, uh, I mess the whole thing up, which is hard because the fourth verse is the one where the whole joke of it is how fast it is. Um, at the very end, she says 27 dinner plates, 37 butter knives, 47 paperweights, 57 candle holders. And as far as I can tell, the only reason those are the numbers is that it's the maximum number of syllables he could plausibly fit into a list of utensils. Uh, so it's really just there to, at the very end, try and mess Amy up as much as possible, which not going to lie, I completely love about the song. Yeah, fear of marriage and commitment is definitely a huge theme in company. I think we most see it in Bobby, but getting married today really does add another perspective to it. And for Amy, she's not anxious about getting married because she's 
still kind of playing the field or keeping someone too much at arm's distance. Uh, the play establishes that she and Paul have been living together for years and basically everyone who knows them considers them to be married. So she's not necessarily afraid of making a serious commitment to this man. She already did that. But I see it as, you know, um, she's described as a pretty frantic and anxious person. And I think the idea of just committing to anyone forever really stresses her out. And I think that's a really natural anxiety that a lot of people feel maybe even more in the 2020s than they did in the 1970s. Now that um, people staying single later into their lives or for all of their lives is a little more normalized socially. Amy is a very comic character. I think even though getting married today is for her like a total serious meltdown, it comes across as so funny because the audience knows she has no reason to really doubt Paul. He's fantastic. Um, you know, their, their relationship really is pretty moving and touching, I think. Um, there are lots of other funny moments in the show. Um, a lot of us couples are also in the song Little Things You Do Together, which takes place at Harry and Sarah's apartment and is sung by Joanne. And it's got a lot of very wry commentary about um, the way married couples kind of bond over strange things. Like um, one of my favorites is looks you misconstrue together. So the idea that as a couple, sometimes you're connected because you both will be in a social situation and misinterpret it in the same way. So it's it's got a really unromanticized portrayal of what it means to love someone and be in a relationship. And I think some of the kind of satire there and some of the, ob the observations about how couples behave are really entertaining. Um, and they match the more serious scenes and more serious ballads of the show really well. I do get to wear a wedding dress. I haven't seen it yet. I'm really excited, especially because in the scene that follows getting married today when she's still in the dress, she talks about how her hairdresser and her stylist maybe went a little too far. Um, so that'll be fun. Also fun is that our director, Vin, has added some of us into the number that immediately precedes that scene. Uh, so I think it's gonna be a bit of a faster change than I had planned. So I'm excited to see how we can pull that magic off. Um, other costume things. I have never done a show set in the 1970s, so I'm just excited to do the hair and makeup and try to represent the fashion of that era and see everything our designers have come up with. It's really interesting when you work on a show for, um, I think we were cast almost a year ago at this point, so I'm just more excited than ever to see the technical elements that we never got to when we paused rehearsals. People should come see the show because it is a classic. Um, I think the world is really looking for chances to appreciate Sondheim's genius since he passed away last year. Um, we got the news while we were in rehearsal and it led to a conversation with all of us about how much this composer and writer means to all of us. And I, as a drama teacher, constantly talk about what a big deal he was for musical theater and changing what kind of music was seen as appropriate for musical theater. So I think there's a lot of sentimental value in checking out this show, a lot of educational value in checking out this show. But then meanwhile, it's also very funny, very relatable, uh, maybe too relatable for us sometimes at rehearsal. But I think it's really going to be a blast and I hope to see you there. Bye. Phone rings, door chimes, in comes company.